Hello everyone. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Welcome to Gaming Scripture and Commentary. Christian gamers talking about Jesus through his word, making comments on anything that happens to come up, and playing a game. Well, okay, not right this show, okay, but we'll play a game later, okay? Anyways, this is He is Risen, where I read and discuss scripture. Welcome to episode three. We're going to be in Romans. Uh, I am taking um, one of the scripture, one of the uh, Sunday sermons I had for the last couple of weeks, or about a month or so ago, and want to comment on that and do a series of those things. Anyway, so I am Ken, aka Kenton. Welcome. Glad you are here. We always want to give this time to God and let His will be done and not ours. So we want to pray as it is our time, our our way. It's our one-to-one -one communication with God. So let's go. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for what you do for us, even we don't ask. Thank you for loving us no matter what we do. You made us in your image with a mind to know you and a heart to love you and a will to serve you. But our knowledge is imperfect, our love inconstant, and our obedience incomplete. Help our souls to breathe after you, after dependent devotion to you, to grow in grace more fully and freely every day. There is no one else we can go to. There is no hope for us outside of the resurrection of Jesus. Help folks watching us be blessed. Help those who are seeking to find. Help those who have found to become better equipped. And surround all of us with a community that will show us the way. Help us to see that we are only truly live when we live to you. In Jesus' great and glorious name we pray. Amen. All right, get your Bible, even though you see on the screen there, you know, whether you're in Twitch or you're watching this on some other platform. But get your Bible anyways, you know, there's old-fashioned kind, you know, kind of the paper paper and binding, or an app on your phone or tablet or a website such as BibleGateway.com, Bible.com, or BlueLetterBible.com. We are reading from the ESV um, edition, a version, uh, translation, sorry. And uh, while you're looking up that verse, I want to remind you all that if you have any prayer requests, please post them here in Twitch chat or in the discussion area, whatever platform you happen to be watching the show on. And if you don't feel like sending them pu privately, then please go ahead and send, send me a private message. Welcome to any comments, questions, thoughts, sayings, tips, or whatever. After all, we want this to be a discussion and a place to hang out and enjoy the hobby we all, hobby we all love called gaming. And if the content is something you want to share or like, then please share and like and subscribe. And then check out other stuff on YouTube, Facebook, and Tumblr and Twitter. You should put that down too. So anyways, yeah. So I want to talk about uh, Romans, Romans 5, 12 through 21. Um, the church presented a five-part series, five part series called In Christ, what it, belongs to, what it means to belong to God. And this is only part one. This is uh, represented by Jesus, as we're coming from Romans 5, 12, 21. So I want to start off by reading the notes that came with the series, okay? And it's not my, not my words, but the words from the, from the um, from church. The primary question this series aims to answer is, what does it actually mean to be a Christian? Or, to put it differently, what does it mean to belong to God? The answer is found in our union with Christ. This relational reunion is so rich that we are going to make the next five weeks to explore it together. Theologian John Murray once said, Nothing is more central or basic than union and communion with Christ. Union with Christ is a central truth of the whole doctrine of salvation. Today, we consider it how Jesus represents his people, and in so doing, gives us a new life-proof identity. All right, so, you know, as I try to do each time I take my notes and I want to share with you, I am, I am, I am, talking for myself only and what I received in the message. Please listen to the full sermon at downtowncorestone.org. Just realized something. Did I uh, get the right website? I think it's, uh, is it downtowncorestone.org? Is it downtowncorestonechurch.org? All right, where are my notes at? Yeah, downtowncornerstone.org. Thank you. Sorry. Anyway, so yeah, let's uh, let's first uh, check on the Twitch chat. No one. Okay. Uh, anyway, so uh, let's get get onto this. Okay, let's get into the notes of the message of the word. So the first thing is defining union with Christ. Okay. So there's a bunch of particular scriptures that are at point to this, but I'm going to start off with some good introduction stuff. You know, the deep and profound relationship between Jesus and his people. That's what being what a defining union with Christ is. In Christ means a union with Jesus. No single method or, or, or thing else describes our relationship with Jesus. Consider all the times the Bible talks about us, us in Christ. 
more than the way or a Christian or other terms, okay? God wants and forges a relationship with us. It's unlike any relationship we could ever have. Union with Christ, okay? So we'll get more into this, but I wanted to, we wanted to point out some things. I'm not going to talk to all of them, but there's lots of different passages in the Bible that points out to being in Christ, okay? So example is 1 Corinthians 1, 2. To the church of God that is in Corinth, to those sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be the saints together with all those who are in every place are called upon the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, both their Lord and ours. Or how about Romans 6.23? For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. How about 1 Corinthians 15.22? For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ shall all be made alive. Or Colossians 3.1 if you, if you then have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above where Christ is, see at the right hand of God. You know, it's not an academic or a theological bullet point or doctrinal idea. It's relationship, okay? You know, that, that's the thing that, 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 I don't think people get it. It's not a religion, it's a relationship. I don't think people understand that, that God didn't do all this just because he wanted us to bow down and serve him. We do bow down and serve him, don't get me wrong. But he wants a relationship with us. He didn't say, all right, do this and you become slaves. No, I want to, he wants to free us from the slavery of sin and, and death. We become heirs to the promise. We become heirs to the to the family. It's like we get we get adopted by the by God the Father. He's if if he was actually looking for us to be something different, like to be worshippers, you know, like 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 he's, like some of the um you know human uh, stories, or you see like these uh, mythologies, or just any stories you hear about like people like bow down and worship me, or even like Star Trek, right? Was it where one episode where the people, the more they worship, the stronger they got, the less they worship, the weaker they got. So they, you know, they get benefits of that. No, God wants a relationship with us, okay? So, so we want, the next section here is fully and forever represented by Jesus, okay? So who are we in? Who represents us? Are we in Jesus or in Adam? Okay, so I'm going to start reading Romans slowly and comment, okay? So this is where we actually get to start reading the uh, uh, actual Romans uh, 5, 12 to 21. You know, we are seeing the difference between those who are in Adam and those who are in Christ or in Jesus. Okay. Now, Adam represents us as humanity. Okay. We share in his guilt and sinful inclinations. Okay. We, share, we need to be reborn again into a new reality. So Adam represents humanity and Christ represents God, the Spirit. Okay. What he wants us to be. Okay. So... Here we go for Romans uh, 5, 12 to 21. Death in Adam and life in Christ. Therefore, just as sin came into the world through one man, Adam, and death through sin, and so death spread to all men and women because all sinned, for sin indeed was in the world because the law was given. But sin is not counted where there is no law. Yet death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over those whose sinning was not like the transgression of Adam, who was a type of the one who was to come. So remember now, Adam is representing humanity. Okay, you know if you know the story of the Bible, you know we had the Adam and Eve in the garden, and they disobeyed God and and sin into the world. But the free gift is not like the trespass. For if many died through one man's trespass, which is Adam. Much more have the grace of God and the free gift of grace of the one man, Jesus Christ, abounded for many. Okay, remember now. So death through Adam, but grace abounds from Jesus. Okay, you know. And the free gift is not like the result of that one man's sin, for the judgment following one trespass brought condemnation. You know, in Adam, but the free gift following many trespasses is brought justification in Jesus or in Christ. For if, because of one man's trespass, again, that's being Adam, death reigned through that one man, much more will those who receive the abundance of grace and the free gift of righteousness reign in life through the one man, Jesus Christ. Get that? Death in Adam, life reigns in Jesus. Who doesn't want to live? I know people talk about, well, I don't want to live forever, okay? It's like that. No, no, no. I'm talking about life, okay? Life being, life's eternity, okay? If you, if you, it's a choice you're going to make to be with God or not be with God, okay? But you're still going to be, after you exit this body, this 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 plane of existence, you might say, right? We are, we are going to be in spirit. We will be still around. So, if there, therefore, as one trespass led to condemnation for all men, so one act of righteousness leads to justification in life for all men. 
For as by the one man's disobedience the many were made sinners in Adam, so by the one man's obedience the many will be made righteous in Jesus. Now the law came in to increase the trespass, but where sin increased, grace abounded all the more, so that as sin reigned in death, grace also might reign through righteousness, leading to eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So remember, Paul wrote Romans, and I love Romans because it's very theological, but also very uh, structured and logical. And basically, you know, this is this is the story. These are the things that Paul told all the churches he planted um, in person. But for the Romans, he wasn't there, so he wrote them his letter to try to explain to him. Okay, so what we get from all this, okay, is the crux of this whole discussion is whole the whole sermon. Okay, now we're getting some more in a minute. Okay, but we want to talk about again what we're talking about here with regards to you know fully and forever. But, fully and forever represented by Jesus, okay? So remember, death from Adam, life from Jesus. Condemnation from Adam, justification from Jesus. Who do you find yourself in? Matter of fact, who do you want to represent you? I, I, if, if, if Adam leads to death and justification leads to Jesus, life leads to Jesus, I want to go with life, okay? Remember, 1 Corinthians 15, 22, as I said before, for as in, as in Adam all die, so also in Christ shall be made alive. Union in Adam or union in Christ? Call to come out from Adam and surrender to Jesus. That's that's the that's the point of this discussion, okay? Justification, which is kind of a legal courtroom term, okay? It, it, it kind of tells you to be you're declared not guilty and you're counted righteous. Counting approved, accepted, loved by who we are, are in and not from what we have done. Get that? Not by what we've done, but who we are in. I love one song. It says, not by what we do that you are saved, but it's by what he did for us. Now, nothing we did, everything he did. Nothing we could do, everything he did. God did this for us. He didn't ask us to do anything but to accept his son. We are adopted, removing all obstacles to adopted. Mind you, get this, okay? Justification allows for the adopted father, okay, to adopt us, okay? It removes all the obstacles for adoption. It just, like, God the Father is saying, you know, you have sinned, and I want nothing to do with that because, you know, I, I'm, a, you know, wrath of the, the wrath of God is on the sinful person, okay? But God, knowing that the wrath looks, the wrathful sins, out, wrath, the wraths out there, punishment for the sin, He says, what's the love of saying? Here's a way for you to come. Here's a way, okay? You know, through Jesus Christ, your justification, and I will adopt you. He, you know, remember Jesus paid all the debts in raising and raising the slate clean it becomes a legal and relational act the record of our sin is credited to jesus and the record of his perfect life is credited to us for propitiation i know it's a theological term but it means that he he, he stood in for us you know uh, he took what we deserve on the cross and now we get what he deserves which is righteousness life you know forgiveness all the, I mean, all the forgiveness but he didn't pay the perfect life you know he takes our righteous unrighteousness, and we get his righteousness. Jesus took our guilt so we can be counted innocent in him. The big question is why? Why does that happen? Why does he take our guilt? Because he represents us. We're in Christ. All that is his is counted to us as we are in him. So as we so we, as we end the, uh, the last session, given a new unshakable identity in Jesus, we're going to read some several passages and talk about things, okay? So I hope this is sinking in and understanding what it's all about, how much God loved us and how much God cares about us, that he gave us his pathway. You know, people who don't understand or see that, they just make assumptions or stereotypes or don't understand what's really happening out there. No. So 1 Corinthians 3, 21-23 so let no one boast in men, for all things are yours, whether Paul or Apollos or Cephas or the world or life or death or the present or the future, all are yours, and you are Christ, and Christ is God's. Second Corinthians 5.17 Therefore, if any was in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. New, as we are now brought out of Adam and now born again. We are now heirs as adopted by God the Father. We are not made to be self-made. We are not meant to bear the weight of architecting reality, but living along the grooves of reality. That was a quote I got from this sermon, okay? And Christ helps us to become more of who we really are in Christ than less of who we are. Our real selves are found in Jesus. Think about it. Think about it. Why? Jesus represents us. 
but I find in my life a freeing a freedom and a a opportunity to be who I am because I'm in Christ. Because God says, Hey, I know who you are. I'm gonna let you be you. Now you're not perfect, you can still be a sinner, but I'm gonna forgive you know, you, you have my justification, my righteousness, okay, but and you're gonna keep sinning, we know that. But you're free to be who you are. You don't have to hide yourself, you don't have to be like some kind of put on airs or trying to do anything else, right? I mean don't don't, don't wanna be like, okay, well, if your real, true, simple nature come out, like, that's who I really am. No, 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 no. Don't get me wrong, okay? You know? So this happens because it's a personal, living, profound relationship with the living God in Christ. I had my, I wrote my, and a couple letters. We are free. We're in Christ. You don't have to fear God's wrath. We sing as we are no longer on the line trying to prove or to win. We have won. We can sing out of the freedom of being in Christ. It's time to come out of being in Adam. You can be in Christ too. Too. How? Just ask Jesus into your life. Ask Jesus to remove your sinful nature of being in Adam. And ask to be justified in Christ. Very simple. You know, It's not like it's a formula or a blunt bunch of, of certain words said in a certain way or anything else. You have to take communion or then go be on your knees. Okay, You don't have to be at church. Okay, You can do it right here and right now. You're watching this video. You're seeing me saying this, right? Go ahead. Ask Jesus into your life and you will watch the transformation, transformation that will take over you. Okay, There you are. Anyways, uh, that's the first part of the five parts, okay? Where we are represented by Jesus, okay? So we'll do the um, next one next week. And so I'll have some more notes and more discussion about this. And yeah, so um, love to hear from you. Any prayer requests, go ahead, let me know. I said this is a discussion, I want this to be a discussion. So go ahead and leave me comments, thoughts, questions, anything you want to do. And yeah, so I hope you watch this video and hope you get blessed by it. I hope you uh, will put your life into God's hands. And I hope that I'm not talking too much or I'm not making sense. I would really, really love people to watch this video, provide feedback and say, you know, Ken, you, I don't understand you sometimes. You talk too fast or you're not very clear or you're saying things that kind of like are in jumbled or uh, not in, in, say, broken sentences and not fully fleshed out thoughts. I don't know. I want to I want to know more. So anyways, let me know. So take care of yourself. God bless you and streaming out.